Hello, I'm Dr. G, and today we'll be talking about how to do a Finch exam. Now, to me, it's very important to do Finch exams on a regular basis because of their small size. It makes them even more vulnerable. So some of the good reasons to do a Finch exam is before buying a bird to make sure that you're going to be getting a healthy bird to start with. Also, it's important to examine them on a regular basis to detect health problems before they become apparent since birds hide their illnesses so well. And also at the first sign of sickness to provide a prompt and specific treatment plan with the help of your avian veterinarian. So for me, I usually use three things to do a finch exam. I take a box to weigh them, some blunt tip tweezers to pull back the feathers over the nostrils and the ears, and a digital scale, probably precise to the tenth of a gram for a finch is better. Now when I do their exam, I'll usually put my thumb underneath their chin and cradle their body in the back of my hand. They're usually more quiet if they're in the palm of my hand. I can also put my fingers on either side of the head. You can see on the right foot we're missing a toe here. Finches often get their feet snaggled in either nesting material or fine fibers, so it's very important to examine them on a regular basis to make sure that their toes are looking fine, that they're not black or reddened or swollen. Also check underneath the wings to see if there's any parasites on their chest area to see if they have a good weight and if their skin moves freely over their keel bone to make sure that they're well hydrated. So that's a very good sign. So I usually look under both wings, they can get parasites there. Before I do a finch exam, often I'm going to observe them. It's very important in the cage before I take them take them out and the adrenaline kicks in, I'll check for the symmetry of the eyes. I'll see if above the nostrils the feathers are matted that could indicate a respiratory problem or if their back is hunched or their tail is going up and down with every breath. I'll also see if they're perching symmetrically, so if their wings are droopy. That's very important to observe before going in there and stressing them out to catch them. Now, it's a lot easier to catch small birds if you dim the lights, it'll reduce their stress. Uh, it's important also to block the surface as you're going in the doorway so the other birds don't escape if there's several of them in there. What you can do is you can try and corner one and just take it gently, pick it up by the back and take it out of the cage making sure the other ones don't come out and see if it's breathing well, that there's no bleeding feathers, make sure that you close the cage properly to prevent any escapees. Uh, try and make sure that the windows are closed also, that there's no ceiling fans going on because it's so easy to lose them. They're very small and skittish birds. So I usually prepare everything ahead of time. I've got my scale to weigh them and my little box here that I'm going to deduce the weight of my box. Then I'm going to put my finch inside to get my, the weight of my finch. Now usually finches are going to weigh between 8 to 20 grams depending on the species. Uh, zebra finches are usually 10 to 13 grams. This one is 11 grams which is a good weight for this, this bird. Then I'll just pick it up gently in the box making sure it doesn't escape so I can do a general physical exam. When I do my general physical exam I usually start with the head. I pull the feathers back, make sure that there is no parasites, no picking wounds from the other birds. Check the ears there, just below the eyes. Sometimes I can see the parasites there too. I check the nostrils to see if they're blocked or not. And if I'm not sure, sometimes I'm going to do the droplet, the water droplet test. I'll just put a water droplet over it, and if it goes in or bubbles, I know the air is passing through. If it just sits there, then the air is not passing. There's a respiratory problem. It's very important to call the vet at, the, at that time. So there's the other ear, and then I'll look inside the mouth. They have a little slit on the top of their hard palate there. It's called a coenal slit with a papier. And you look at the tongue, make sure that there's no crusting, white crusting in there or yellow crusting. Then I'm going to check in the neck area to see if they've eaten, if they have seeds. And I'm going to check for their weight. So it's very important to put your finger from one side to the other, passing from one wing across the chest to the other wing to make sure it makes a nice U shape. If it makes a V shape, it's because they're too thin, because the keel bone is very pointy. If it makes a W shape, they're too fat. 
and checking the abdomen for eggs and underneath the feet for pressure sores. I'll look under both feet. Then I'll pull out the wings. And you see the bird is quite cooperative even though it's very small and probably very frightened as well because I'm very gentle in the way I'm manipulating it. Then I'm going to check the cloacal area to see if it's got diarrhea, if the feathers are all matted, check the abdomen, sometimes they get tumors in there. I'll flip the tail over to look at the preening gland, the uropegial gland, to see if it's symmetrical or if it's blocked. Then I'm gently going to flip them over, look at the back, sometimes when they get picked on by the others, they get wounds there on the back. I can also see the uropegial gland from this side. So this little zebra finch was very cooperative, very nice. I'll put him back in the cage on the bottom of the cage. And he's going to go up when he's nice and ready to go join his friend there. So we say bye-bye to our finch. See you later.